Once run deeper than I remember, Miss Castillo. I'm impressed. Pardon my curiosity, but what are you looking for here? Abnaxus himself vanished a decade ago. I should trust Brian. There's no point hiding anything from him. It's not that I don't trust him, but... I was just curious about what was in here. You know what they say about curiosity, Miss Castillo. It killed the cat? What? No. Uh, curiosity is the doorway to knowledge and wisdom. Looks like I picked the perfect day for a stroll in the green. I was wondering why that odorous Hillerus fellow wasn't still trying to chop this tree down. Now I know. Let's see if we find anything interesting, shall we? This place has the slightly tacky ambience of a New Age shop. Those are some portentous looking books. I wish I could read them. Interesting. This is fascinating. All those years and it was right here under my nose. this mean? Hmm. I was right. wrong about that part, but at least now I know. Have you found anything of interest? Keep looking. This place is a treasure trove. Here's another note. On the matter of the kin and the approaching War of the Balance... <laughs> By Jove, this is the information we've been looking for. I can't believe it was right here all this time. Your help has been invaluable, Zoe. I'm in your debt. Mr. Westhouse, Brian. He seems very enthusiastic and friendly, probably. I have a hard time reading him, to be honest. This looks interesting. The first dreamer references in the annals of dreaming, uh, that's this book right here. And the chapter about the first dream, it's certainly a starting point. Let's see what it says. Can you read that book? I've lived in Arcadia for decades and there hasn't been much to do aside from studying ancient texts. So yes, I can read this book. Let's see, the chapter in question speaks of the Ular. They are said to be wardens of the Dreaming One, whatever that means. It's a rough translation, the English language isn't quite up to the task. 
the Ular and the Yete, one people that split into two. That sounds familiar. It says here the Yete left the Purple Mountains to go south to burrow into the ground something about a well of dreams. I mean, I don't know how much of this is true and how much is fantasy or prophecy. It's a, a difficult book to decipher. There's also something about two dreamers becoming one. It's vague. This is almost certainly a prophecy of some sort. The Ular live on Cloud Peak. It's in the mountains of Yedra. Where's that on the map? Ah, there it is. Straight north across the plains, right in the middle of the border mountains. This is an old book, so I don't know if they still live there. I've never heard of the Ular. They might all be dead. What do you think this means? Hmm. I'm not sure there's much to learn from that one. What do you think this means? Hmm. I'm not sure there's much to learn from that one. That note fell out of the annals when Westhouse turned the pages. This note fell out from the pages of the annals. What's a soulless stone? I'm not sure. The soul stone was taken from Luke's by the warlock Clax. It must be retrieved or the past, present, and future will cease to be. That sounds ominous. It does indeed. I don't know about any soul stone, but I'm guessing this Clax fellow does. I wonder if Abnaxus means old Roper Clax. April told me his story. He was a two-bit wizard who resided in a floating castle up north near the border mountains. April said she taught him a lesson. She didn't get into any details, but he lost his castle. Last I heard, he's doing children's theater here in town. Reformed, apparently, if that's a thing a wizard is capable of. Sounds like this soul stone is important. Let's see. There. Cloud Peak, just like the book said. This is it. This shows the way to the Purple Mountains. I'm sure Abnaxus won't mind me borrowing. I'll return it to him in person. The war if of I the make it balance. to Cloud Peak. Finally, something concrete. I should get going. Should we. Would you mind terribly if I stayed here to read these books? Well, this is... it's private property, isn't it? Abnoxus isn't coming back, and I've been itching for a chance to peruse his library for years now. I promise I won't remove anything or make a mess. It doesn't look like Brian's gonna do any damage to the place. He's respectful and curious. It couldn't hurt to let him stay. He might have the best of intentions, but I made a promise to blind Bob. I'd feel awful if anything happened to Abnaxus's abode. I'm sorry, I don't think I can let you stay in here. I'm not sure I need your permission. I... Only joking. <laughs> I understand. I'll take my leave now, Miss Castillo. I certainly hope we'll see each other again soon. So, if this place is bigger on the inside...
Didn't you say something about a wizard and a puppet show? Nope. No, you did. You said something about a show in the square. I did not. Crow. Oh, right, right! Roper Klax's Fingerlings! Man, that show's great! A modern classic! Klax. He's the wizard April Ryan fought. That's right. He was behaving badly, so she fought him and trapped him inside some sort of calculating machine. Pretty clever stuff. Where can I find this puppet show? I'll show you. Roper Clax, I presume. He looks wizardly, as in how I expected wizards to look when I was ten. If you'll seek an autograph, you must purchase my book first. It's on sale today, only... No, sorry. I, I need to talk to you. Talk, hmm? Well, I only have a few minutes before my show begins, but I'm sure I can spare a couple of them for a pretty young thing like you. This has to be the right man. You are Roper Clax, right? The wizard? Who told you that? Well, that sign, for one. No, the, the wizard part. Who told you? I mean, uh, I'm merely a humble finger puppeteer trying to make an honest living in a cold and heartless world. <laughs> but you were a wizard once. Fully rehabilitated, I don't go anywhere near sorcery, not anymore. You should really read my highly acclaimed and best-selling memoir, A Farewell to My Wizarding Ways. It's a thrilling story of redemption and romance, of dashing heroes and wicked villainesses, of flying castles and curious calculating devices. Every word of it as true as the night is dark and the day is bright, of course. <laughs> It's an odd name for a children's puppet show. The Fingerlings. Ah, my beloved finger puppets, beloved by all children and critics alike. Gilbert Grutton of the Daily Mercurian called my show simply astonishing and wrote that it was quite impossible to look away. I couldn't believe my eyes and like a slow motion cart wreck. You see, the fingerlings represent a revolution in finger puppeteering, or as I call it, fingering, uh, trademark and patent pending. The women in particular are quite ecstatic about it. Stay for the show. I guarantee a good time. Didn't he... Do you remember April Ryan? April Ryan? Oh, yes, of course, absolutely, certainly, naturally. The bit <clears throat> The brave young woman who came to my castle and stole it and helped me put my sorceress past behind me. How could I possibly forget? He's obviously got some issues with April. I'd be curious to learn more. So, about April. Why, why does everyone want to talk about April Ryan? She was just a weak little human who stumbled onto things she didn't... <clears throat> no, 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 I must apologize. You see, April and I had some disagreements in the past. I'm past that now. I'm a different person. As for April Ryan... Yeah, I hear 
she suffered an ignoble death at the hands of our Azani benefactors. What a shame. What a terrible, terrible shame. <laughs> I might as well. Do you recall owning a soul stone? A soul stone? I... I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was just wondering, since there are so many impressive tales about your powers where I come from. And where would that be? Um... That was a long time ago. In another life, I've moved on. I'm a different person now in every way. I was just wondering what happened to the stone. She took it, that bitch. Balance? Pardon me? I don't know where that came from. Who? The Yaga. The Wicked Witch of the North, as these simpletons call her. As if they have any idea who and what she truly is. She lurks in Riverwood in the dark places she feeds on that stone like a... <coughs> like I said, that's in the past and I've left it all behind long ago. Now I make an honest living bringing joy to children through my most excellent and revolutionary finger puppet theater. And on that note, I must beg your pardon, young miss. The show is about to begin. <laughs> Can we please talk again afterwards? I have some more questions. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Absolutely after the show. After the show, yes, 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 yes. Toodaloo! Yes, here we go. This is gonna be so good. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, humans and... Well, humans. And you, a Zadi soldier standing over there, you're welcome to watch. Just don't rattle your sabers or rustle your suits. Uh, welcome to this morning's performance of... The Fingerlings. Uh, I am your host and puppeteer, Rupert Clax, esteemed thespian and raconteur, author and entrepreneur. My book is available for purchase with a free personalized dedication. Speak to me after the show. A donation is both appreciated and expected. Drop your coins into the box after the show. Remember that every iron piece goes towards a good purpose. Woohoo! <laughs> Go fingerlings! My beloved fingerlings, handcrafted reproductions of renowned actors from across Arcadia, immortalized in finger puppet form by skilled artisans. Using only the finest fabrics and natural materials, these lovely creatures are as dear to me as children and as talented and protean as the finest human players. You're all welcome to approach the stage after the show, of course, to admire my finely crafted miniatures up close and intimately. No food, no touching, no children. And now, beloved audience, prepare yourselves for a journey into mystery for a true story of wizardry and magic. I present to you the tale of the good-hearted wizard and the villainous winch. Once upon a time in the distant north, there lived a kindly old wizard in a wonderful flying castle. This very friendly wizard liked to tease and toy with the people of the land and Sometimes he would do silly things like uh, turn them into stone or furry animals and bottle up the wind. <laughs> Naturally, he meant no harm and the people of the land loved the wizard like they would a grandfather, a very young and very, very handsome grandfather. But one day, an evil sorceress from a distant land came to visit the kindly wizard. This ugly, selfish witch didn't understand that the wizard was only trying to make people happy. She used her dark, 
sorcery to steal all of his possessions and trap him inside a tiny little box where the gentle wizard was barely able to breathe. The poor old man was trapped for many moons inside this box before a benevolent wandering god arrived to free him from his prison. The wizard pledged eternal allegiance to the wandering god in return for vengeance against the cruel witch who trapped him. Together they... There he is, Commander. The dangerous loon who's corrupting our youth with his occult finger rings. What? What's this? What? What are you doing? What's going on? You can't... Hey! Hey, hands off! You're teaching children of magic, old man. You ought to know better. Release me, you dishonorable brute! By the authority vested in me by the Greater Azadi Empire and the Emissary, and in accordance with provisional imperial law prohibiting any and all teachings of occult magic, I'm taking you into custody. You can't do this! You don't know who I am! Tell it to the magistrate, wizard. My fingerlings! My precious handcrafted fingerlings! No! I cannot believe that they arrested him. What a travesty. I don't think he's alone in there. He has company. There's something wrong with him. When I looked at his face, I saw shadows. Stupid wizard, he's still trapped. But this time he's trapped inside himself. I don't think he's alone in there. He has company. I didn't see that coming. I guess the Azadi aren't fans of creepy puppet shows either. I think it had more to do with him being a wizard. Okay, shit. So what now? He was my only lead to the Soul Stone. All I have to go on is something about a Yaga and Riverwood. Riverwood? I know Riverwood. I've been to Riverwood. If it's Riverwood you need, I know how to get to Riverwood. Really? And the Yaga? The Wicker Witch? I don't know anything about Yagas, but I do know something about witches in Riverwood. On my last trip there, we had a close encounter with one of them. That witch is toast, of course, but I can probably find my way back to Riverwood. It's north. We go north. Wait, which way is up? Yeah, north! Okay. Uh, okay. That's something, right? Much better than nothing. We just need a way to get north that doesn't involve me walking all the way. Or me flying. I'm not flying all that way. I tire easily. Wait. I feel a cunning plan coming on. Follow me, Zoe. Uh-oh. It's either a cunning plan, or I need the toilet. But I'm pretty sure it's a cunning plan. I still can't believe you pulled off the voice and the whole fake hand thing. The hat looked great on you. Oh, totally. Uh, not so sure about the beard, though. My face is itchy. Speaking of faces, I can never show mine in Mercuria again. Not after that last bit we did. If everything goes well, you won't have to. At least we have a ride. Can I trust this thing? They're docile cows, the Elguan. Just leave it to me. Mush, Daisy! Mush! Whoa, whoa, I think you're upsetting her. I love. I'll leave the cowgirling to you. I'll fly ahead and scout the terrain instead. Don't lose sight of me!
mean, that hurt. Never trust an Elguan, cowardly cows. Oh, something must have spooked it. What do we do now? This place looks familiar. I think we're close. In fact, I think we're... Leave! Go, or I'll call the others! Whoa, hey there, I'm, I'm friendly and, and unarmed. You're human. You can't be fr... Bird? Crowbird? Hello. Hey, you're that fretful furry thing we met the first time we came through here. Ben... Franklin. Ben Bandu. This isn't the same human who accompanied you last time. This is my new human. She's mostly harmless. Say hello, Zoe. Don't be rude. I guess... hello? I have no idea who or what this creature is. For all I know, it's associated with the Yaga. We don't have time to chat with the locals. We're on a mission. I guess... hello? Hello? Hello. Are you the new Bandu Mbata? Bamboo... what? No, I have no idea. I'm Zoe. You're a dreamer. So they keep saying. I'm not very good at it. How did you know? We live close to the dreaming here. Her dreams surround us. The Yaga. That's it! That's the one we're looking for, right, Zoe? The Yaga! You're... you're looking for the Yaga? Are, on purpose? Are you mad? Oh, I'm not. Her? I'm not so sure about. You know the Yaga. She lives in this forest. We do not speak her name. She's... She's mean. We need to find her right now, but we can't bring far. Teddy Bear probably knows more about the Yaga. Who is she? The... Yaga? She's old. Really old. She's been around since long before my people came to this forest. Once, she had many servants. Witches, warlocks, evil ones. Like in the stories told by the elders. But her servants are all gone now. So she woke up and crossed into our world. She doesn't belong here. But she's lonely and hungry. Hungry. Great. Well, we still have to find her. She has the Soul Stone. The Soul Stone? I've heard of the Soul Stone. The Yaga took it from the fallen fortress of her warlock. Warlock? Roper Clax worked for the Yaga? They all did. The Gribbler, Clax, all the evil witches and warlocks of the Northlands. But they're gone now. Just like my people. April Ryan imprisoned the warlock and killed the witch. She saved us all. But then... Then the Azadi came with sharp blades and metal tubes that spewed fire. They murdered most of us. Some fled east. I'm the only one left here now. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. One day, they'll come back. All the surviving Banda. Until then, I watch over their burrows. And I sing. For them. For all of us. This... Soul Stone... It's important? Very. You'll use it to fight the Azadi? That's part of it, yes. I'll take you to the Yaga. Or... As close as I dare go to her lair, anyway. Great! I was expecting you to say no, and by expecting... I mean, hoping. Does the bird always speak like that? I'm afraid so. Lead the way, Ben. The Yaga's beyond the ridge. Once you cross that, you're in her realm. You're not coming with? Did you not hear me when I said she was hungry? No, I'm not coming with you. The walls of that place are thin, and she can smell my magic. A wise decision, tiny man. 
Come on, Zoe, let's turn around and head back with Benben. Maybe catch a fat squirrel and roast it for dinner? This is what we came here for. If we don't get the Soul Stone... Everyone dies, the world ends, no more Christmases, blah, blah, blah. I'm so sick of walking into one perilous scenario after the other. After we're done with this one, no more adventures. I swear to the Feather Gods of old. You'll know you're there when you see the Gribbler's old house. She was the witch who lived here before. The Gribbler served the Yaga, and that's where she came through from the beyond. Will you wait for us, Ben? I'll wait until nightfall. But if you're not back by then... We'll be back. And I had such a craving for Crispy Squirrel. Let's make sure our protagonist has to descend into terrifying darkness, rather than walk into a brightly lit flowery glade. Life, let, life always looks more inviting in the opposite direction of where I need to go. There's a lesson there, somewhere. Let's make sure our protagonist has to descend into terrifying darkness, rather than walk into a brightly lit flowery glade. They've got that whole normal things that should look quaint and safe except they look horrifically scary thing down to a fine art. This is all very grim. I'm expecting an evil queen and a sleeping beauty at any time. Thorny bushes are never a good sign, really. There's just no place for that in a happy story. Mother of Ravens! I don't feel very welcome. I mean, this isn't just a bad sign. It's all the bad signs, all at once, like a grab bag of ill omens. There are plenty of stones lying about. Let's just pick one and pretend it's the soul stone. It's not like anyone I'm would know what it's I'm not saying I won't cross it, like. but I do expect the bridge to do something terrible to me. They've got that whole normal things that should look quaint and safe except they look horrifically scary thing down to a fine art. I'm not saying I won't cross it, but I do expect the bridge to do something terrible to me. That's a not at all reassuring shade of black. And what are those swirling things? Giant tadpoles? I don't want to know. This looks like one of those pivotal moments where the audience is yelling at the heroine, Don't go through the gate! Are you crazy? Once I'm past that gate, there's probably no way back. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts. This looks like one of those pivotal moments where the audience is yelling at the heroine, Don't go through the gate! Are you crazy? I'm glad I have Crow here. Regardless of how useless he may be at times, he's still company. I'll take company oh. over no company anytime. My tiny bird heart. That's so not reassuring. And I used to like cats. Nice kitties. Nice red-eyed terrifying kitty. That's so not reassuring. And I used to like cats. Nice kitties. Nice red-eyed terrifying kitties. Dark, scary Turn cave. Around. No way to get around it. Don't come any Fairy tale conventions never fail to make my She's life here. miserable. I know this smell. She's dark, dark, scary cave. Incense and rotting No flesh. way to get around it. Smells like witches, Fairy tale all right. conventions never fail to is make my, my life miserable. Or is the light changing? Is it getting darker? Am I going blind? Help! I think this is a Do warning you hear sign. This I stuff voices. basically spells I don't turn like disembodied around, voices. go away, disembodied death, voices are never a good Crow sign. Crow looks paler than usual. Even his feathers are losing color. If he had a choice, I'm sure he'd fly out of here in a second, but he's sticking with me. He's braver than expected, I'll give him that. They're... Their spe are those the souls of lost children? If so, this I feel strange. I've poor things. They're when I was in a coma. Inside story time. 
I must be on the border between waking and dreams. Poor things. What's worse than a twisting path into darkness through thorny bushes and sharp, naked branches? A swamp. Of course there's a swamp. The only thing stopping me from running in the opposite direction right now is knowing I'll have to pass through that cave again. They're... they're speaking. Are those the souls of lost children? The wicked witch is gone. If so, this place is, is even more now. horrifying than I'd imagined. She'll eat you up, like she ate all of us. She I'm glad us. I have Crow here. She trapped us. Regardless of how she useless he may be at times, he's so still what now? Do we just go up and knock on the door? I don't see a doorbell. <laughs> no, this is neither us. the time nor place save for levity. Yourself. Oh, I know. Go. Okay, so maybe not just a house after all. Okay, so maybe not just a house after all. You have something that's not yours. Leave, monkey. Not until you give me the soul stone. We do not know what you speak of. Whoa, my whole body's tingling. I can change things. I can manipulate this tree. Please, I need to speak with the Yaga. There are three mines in there. But which one's the Yaga? I can hear several voices, all of them angry. It's so loud, so strong. I can't, I can't keep listening. She's too strong. Oh, this sucks. Wait, the sky? Is this story time? 
But it's not like how I remember it. It looks... older. It looks a lot... older. you a clever monkey. Hush, sister. Don't speak to it. Just let it lose itself in the dark. It'll weaken, and then we can eat it. It'll probably taste honey sweet, like a newborn babe. Do not underestimate this one, sisters. There's something different about it. Hello? Maybe not so clever after all. We're hungry. We need to eat. Not long now. You must be tired, monkey. Your eyes grow heavy. Sleep. We'll watch over you. Show yourselves. Is it not asleep yet? Lie down and shut your eyes, monkey. Let us feed. That's not going to happen. It answers back. Like a thing with a mind of its own. A very clever monkey. This one has spirit and something else. Something powerful. The wicker witch of the now, now, there's no need for insults. We are a Yaga. No monkey has ever been here before. We're curious about you. We, the sisters, Bayeb Ayaga. Bayeb Aya, Baba Yaga. Older than time, older than memory, old as darkness. Always three. Not always, sister. In the beginning, the Yaga was one, and then everything unraveled. Light came, worlds were born, monkeys bred and became legion. And the one became three. You are from across the divide. From a world ruled by machines. That's right. But not really here at all. Dreaming. Apparently so. We thought there was only one dreamer. You were mistaken. Something made you. That's interesting. We didn't see this coming. We do so love surprises. What do you want from us, monkey? The soul stone. You stole it. Luke stole it first. Only fair that we stole it back. What do you want with it? To bring it back where it belongs. To cure Lux. Lux is the... Lux is the first dreamer. We know. Oh, we know. You cannot teach us things, monkey. We were there in the darkness, in the time before time, before all this terrible brightness, before you monkeys spoiled it. We had the soul stone then. It fed us and made us strong. But Lux took it so that Lux could dream. We were there when Lux dreamed the first dream and the stars were born and everything came apart. If we give you the stone, we fade from memory. We will be forgotten. It's all that anchors us when there's no one left to worship and fear us. But they do worship you, don't they? In the city, they've built effigies to the Wicker Witch. The Wicker Witch! A bedtime story, a spineless fairy tale for nestlings. No one truly fears the Yaga anymore. Our power is diminished. I don't know.
People need darkness. They need to be frightened. In my world, scary is popular. There are films, games, haunted houses. Playthings. We are less than we were. We remember feeding, our stomachs bloated with flesh and fear. Well, things change. That's how it goes. Maybe, instead of giving you the soul stone, we eat you up. All your delicious memories. All your dreaming powers. Your soul will keep us warm and sated. How's that gonna help anyone? Help? What makes you think we'll help? We owe the universe nothing, monkey. We owe looks nothing. Why should we care if the dream ends? Perhaps, if you give us a little morsel, a taste of you, what can you offer us? Offer? A sin. A secret. Something dark. Something you keep deep inside and fear to reveal. I... I lied to Queenie about the campaign. She saw through the deception, but it was still a very selfish thing to do. I promised Hannah I wouldn't tell Queenie where she was hiding, but I did it anyway. And what for? I'm not even sure I believed I was helping Hannah. It was currency. I, that man in my apartment, he was trying to protect me, but I got him killed. Is there really nothing I can give her? What will they do to me if I refuse? I lied to Queenie about the campaign. I lied to someone who was only looking out for my best interests, and I did it for my own selfish gains. A small lie, confessed and forgiven. Why do you offer us this? It will barely fill our mouths, let alone our stomachs. That man in my apartment. I promised Hannah I I betrayed a friend's trust and revealed her secret to someone else. Not a betrayal. Not a selfish lie, not cowardice. This nibble tastes like ash and only serves to stoke our ravenous hunger. That man in my apartment. A man died because of my actions. I didn't know who he was, but I still feel responsible for his death. A panicked decision. The monkey didn't even know she was making a choice. Why give us this? It's a crumb, nothing more. Still, we'll take this little piece of you. It belongs to us now, and you'll have no memory of it. And in exchange, you'll give me the soul stone? We will not. We made no promises. The Soul Stone is ours. We need it. If you do that, you'll not only be destroying everything and everyone, you'll be all alone. Who will worship and fear you when they're all gone? So what else can you offer us, monkey? What can you give of yourself to prove that this matters? I don't know. You demand that we give up the thing that feeds us and keeps us warm. And you cannot make a similar sacrifice. You're right. I can't. I don't have what you're asking for. I'm human. I've made terrible decisions, but I don't linger on those decisions. I move forward and live with the consequences. Shame, anger, disappointment, regret. That's not what feeds me. I survive because I let go every day. Because I have hope and faith in the future. Not because I look back. That goes for most people. And all I want is to give those people a chance to make their choices, good or bad, and carry on living and learning. If that's not enough for you, then I have nothing. And if I don't, if I fail to bring the Soul Stone to the first dreamer, Lux dies. The dream ends. There will be no one around to remember any of us, or the choices we've made that brought us here. It all hinges on this moment in time. We know this, little monkey. This is why we are giving you the Soul Stone. But you must do one thing for us in return. Anything, as long as it's mine to give. You must remember us when the dream is in you. 
The world needs us. Without the sisters, without the Yaga, there is no fear, no imagination. Every dream needs a nightmare. I don't think I could forget, even if I tried. Yes, I'll remember you. Good. 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 Here is the Soul Stone. Take it, use it to wake Lux. We would have done it ourselves, but the Dreamer Monkey is the only one with that power. How do I get there? Someone's coming. Little furry thing. They will gift you a beast to ride. Go to Lux. You will feel Lux like a lantern in the dark. Follow the light. Save the dream, Dreamer. Become one with the first. What does that mean? You'll find out. And a clever monkey, beware the wizard of lies. He schemes, he plots, he wishes to remake the world. He wears a mask, he harbors ambitions. He always did, but now there's something in him. It's a dangerous thing, little monkey. Watch out. Now, please. Where did you disappear to? I have a thing about huge monster houses. I don't like them. Oh, you're the worst sidekick. That's what they keep telling me. I honestly don't know why. Let's go back and find the furry little halfling thing again. I bet you he didn't wait for us. I bet you he's long gone. She's letting us go. What did you do? We're free. Time to go. Thank you, Dreamer. Find Luke's. Save the dream. Is this the one? That's her. That's Zoe. You face Yaga and live? This is impossible. Who are you? Another banda? I thought Ben was the only one left. She Another banda? She seems impressed with me. I should probably use that. Might as well go with what everyone calls me here. Another banda? She seems impressed with me. I used my wits to defeat the Yaga. Wits? Wits? Human thinks she got wits? Well, what you lack in humility, human, you make up for in spirit. Tell me, fearless hero, how you survive, Yaga? You strike bargain like witches of old? Sell yourself to Yaga for freedom and power? Do you serve Yaga now? I don't serve anyone. And no bargain. I just... I'd like to learn more about the Yaga. Maybe this one knows something. I don't have time to talk about the Yaga. We need to... I'd like to learn... Who is the Yaga? I only know what elders tell me when I was child. And I only ever encounter Yaga's servants. One of them lived in this forest before. She was Gribbler. Twisted, ancient, evil thing. 
No one but Yaga know what Yaga truly is. Those who face her never come home, aside from you. My grandmother tell me Yaga was born before beginning of time. Lux and Yaga, light and dark, dream and nightmare. Balance is in everything, human. When our world takes shape, so did Yaga. One became three. Three sisters. Innocence, age, decay. All aspects of life. More than the first dreamer, Yaga understand life. She understand mortality. Mortality in her blood. Maybe why she hate the living so much. Why she grew mean and hungry. She spread her will across world into witches and warlocks, sorcerers and necromancers, the weak and malleable. But as old magic fade, so do Yaga. Wizard Clax and Gribbler were two of her last servants, and April Ryan defeated them both. After that, they say, Yaga was diminished. Now Wicca Witch of North is joke to humans of Mercuria. They remember nothing of what she was. They never see their young eaten by night. But Yaga is not the night that threatens world now. Her darkness is different darkness, one that balances light, necessary darkness. She is nightmare that feeds imagination. The other darkness... Well, other darkness is deeper and final. A black fire that spreads and burns until nothing left, until time itself is ashes. Even Yaga feared this darkness. I believe that's why she let me go. So that I can help. You got the soul stone? You carry soul stone? What soul stone? You can trust Bendu, Masiri Zoe. She is an elder. She returned from exile to help me find those who survived. I have Lux's soul stone. I need to take it north to the Ula. Ula? Why Ula? You know them. I heard of Ula in stories. Ancient people inhabit ruins of their own civilization, high in border mountains. You know where to go? I've seen a map. They live on Cloud Peak in the mountains of Yedra. Maps deceive. Go north and then west. A week's journey on foot before you start climb. We don't have a week. Rushing, rushing, rushing into anything is unwise. You carry Soulstone to Ula for what reason? To return it to the first dreamer. Lux is with Ula? So my visions tell me. Your visions? I know this is hard to believe, but I promise I'm... I believe, I believe. No need to promise. Story too unbelievable for Mole not to believe. <laughs>